Hello, everyone, and um, welcome to this special full-length webinar. Um, I'm going to try and keep it uh, under an hour, um, all about time and where, why I hate the phrase time management. Because I'm sure that all of us here on this webinar together uh, one of the biggest challenges we face is time, and this is true whether you are just starting out, a complete beginner, or even if you're a uh, superstar DJ, uh, you will still have the challenges of time. This is one of the reasons I always say to people um, who have a day job and who are attempting to get their uh, music off the ground, don't rely on the fact of doing it full time that you'll suddenly have loads of time in your life. It simply doesn't work like that. You have to focus on uh, ways of using your time uh, more effectively rather than expecting there to be this fictional point in your life where there is always going to be loads of time. It ain't going to happen. Okay, so in the uh, next hour or so, you're going to learn how asking one, just one simple question will allow you to do around uh, four times more in the same time. Uh, you're going to learn five essential skills I learned from my day in a broken down ambulance uh, with Andy from Groove Armada. And of course, you're going to learn why I think time management sucks. Now, I know we've got a lot of people who are, are on my full program, Start Now, Finish Fast, online. So they will have uh, seen this already. And also, I have shared it with the people who are uh, doing the production game as well. But I just uh, wanted to uh, show you this and then give you a recent example just the other day of how somebody doing this, the results it has created. Because often you watch content and you're like, well, yeah, I mean, this might not work. This isn't like a real thing. Connecting the content to the possible results sometimes doesn't happen. So I just want to show you how uh, the things that I teach can make a difference because it will mean you are more likely to actually do this. So obviously, in order for you to get the result out of any content, the content has to be valuable. Um, and what I'm about to share with you is valuable. It's changed my life and it's changed many other people's lives as well. You need to know what you want from uh, the content. So what would be good right now um, is for you to uh, write in the chat box what your biggest challenge with time is. Um, maybe you uh, haven't got it, you haven't got enough of it. Maybe you always feel rushed. Just just why you wanted to watch this webinar about time. But then the most important of the lot in order to get the result you want out of any content is you must take action. Without action. Not all of it is completely uh, useless. Sometimes people say to me, and I spoke about this yet on the webinar yesterday, sometimes people will send me an email and say it stopped working. What they really mean is they stopped doing it. They stopped taking action. So I just wanted to show you how uh, some of what I'm going to share with you today um, has helped somebody else. Um, in fact, this person... I'm going to start a screen share. This person, I oh know that's the wrong one. Where are we up there? Yes, this person, um, Mark, he um, was the first person ever to sign up for Start Now, Finish Fast. So there's an example of uh, an action taker, if ever there was one. I mean, I literally put the sales, the the, uh, the uh, sign up page up, the sales page, and um, Waited with bated breath, which is the first time I ever I ever did anything like this. Waited with bated breath for about 20 minutes. My PayPal app went ping, and it was Mark who had bought. So here's what he wrote just on March the 21st. So that's just a few days ago now, just five days ago. So things have definitely been going from strength to strength since I started with SNFF. I've just had word that Universal's Decca label are going to put out a remix of mine. I'm super stoked to say the least. SNFF has been a major help in getting this far in so many ways. When I first got on board with SNFF in 2012, I started doing one hour of creative work every morning and following the meditation, uh, following the meditation, which massively improved my productivity. I was finishing maybe a couple of tracks a year before I started and now bash out one every week or so. It also enabled me to think much more clearly about my day job and life options, which I was flapping about quite heavily at the time. 
Mike actually took me through some question answer based coaching here on the forum before I got the job I now here at, have at Universal. All the content and ideas about focusing, just getting stuff finished and not worrying about perfection have been amazing. Before SNFF, I more than likely would not have been happy enough with the track to finish, let alone submit it to someone else. I also think having made the commitment and having goals has changed my outlook and how I'm perceived in a helpful way. For example, before SNFF, production was a fun hobby that I would maybe occasionally mention or bring it up. Now when people ask me what I do and say I get up every morning and write music before I go to work, I get a very different reaction. I might not have got the remix opportunity if I hadn't talked about this commitment to someone. I think just by doing SNFF and following the program, it gives you an edge over producers who aren't as committed or focused. Possibly the biggest truism is that if you don't hear back, then definitely don't give up. I submitted my remix to Decca over a year ago. I did a lot of harassing and never got any feedback, and I work in the same company. In the end, I considered it a lost cause. I then got an email the other day saying, did I have the remix to hand again, as they were about to send all the remixes to management. A day later, I got the green light. Anyway, I just wanted to thank Mike and everyone else in the community, as it's been so supportive, and I hope this provides some inspiration that good shit can happen if you keep plugging away. Cheers, Mark. So, as I said, the reason I shared that with you is because I want you to know that what is possible. Decca, by the way, was the Beatles' first label. So it's a proper old school uh, major label. And as Mark said, before he started using some of what I'm about to teach you now, uh, he, was, he finished maybe two tracks in a year. He now can finish consistently around a track a week. And that is a result he got out of it. Now, I have to say at this point, me reading that to you isn't me telling you that if you use this stuff or if you use any of the stuff in the program, this will happen to you. Obviously, I have no way of knowing whether you will use it or how you will use it or, 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 or anything like that. I can only give you the information and then you go away and do with it. So I just want to say that and make that very clear. I am not promising that you will get a remix, a, a Decca or any remixes at all. I'm just showing you what's possible because um, showing you a, a true story of someone who's just had success just a few days ago will be incredibly motivating will make, and will mean you'll be more likely to use the information I'm about to um, give you. So, talking about, oops, I stopped my recording. Yeah. Talking about um, time management. So, let me, where's my, here we are. Um, time management sucks. That's because time management, time management relies on this. Efficiency. But this efficiency isn't where your um, biggest breakthroughs will occur. Peter Drucker, who's a, a very famous uh, management person, uh, a very kind of management guru, he said that efficiency is doing things right, whereas effectiveness is doing the right things. He also went on to say that there is nothing more useless than doing efficiently that which needn't be done at all. And I'm going to change that and say there is nothing more inefficient than doing efficiently that which needn't be done at all. If you think about it, um, if, you, if you are incredibly efficient and get an enormous amount of stuff done that you don't need to do at all, then that is the most ineffective thing you could possibly do. You spend all this time getting really good at doing stuff you really, really don't need to do. So let's forget about efficiency. It can help, but only once you have been focused on your effectiveness. So how do we um, work out, in terms of uh, music production, or in terms of anything, but that, you know, obviously this is about music production, what... Um, what is 
uh, effective. What are the things that you need to do and what are the things you don't need to do? Well, we're going to go back in time and we're going to talk about a guy called Vilfredo Pareto. Now, I'm going to take a very effective drink of water. The lights in here make it really, really hot. So I, I, I need a lot of a drink. So, Vilfredo Pareto was an Italian economist in the um, 18th century, and he found that 80% of the land was owned by 20% of the people, which probably sounds quite familiar. And then he also found, I think he must have been a keen gardener who enjoyed peas, because he also found that 20% um, uh, um, of the pea pods in his garden uh, yielded 80% of the peas. Sorry, I had to get that, that the right way around. So yeah, 20% of the pea pod yielded 80% of the peas. And it turns out that this law, this 80-20 law, is, is absolutely everywhere. It's, it's, it's all around us. For instance, I bet that the music on your iPhone or whatever music device you, you use, you probably listen to 20% of it 80% of the time. You probably wear 20% um, of your clothes 80% of the time. 80% uh, of the traffic travels on 20% of the roads and so on and so on and so forth. Um, this is, it's almost a, it's almost a law of nature. It's absolutely um, everywhere. Now, obviously the um, exact percentages aren't always 80-20. Sometimes it can be 60-40, sometimes it can be 90-10, 70-30. But the broad idea is that A minimum of the input will give you maximum or most of the results. So what on earth has this got to do with making music and time? Well, what this means is that left unchecked, unless you are actually consciously doing something about it, you will be spending 80% of your time doing stuff that will only get you 20% of the results. And conversely, you will be spending 20% of your time doing stuff that gets you 80% of the results. So in other words, if you think about it, there are some actions that you're taking which... you're spending a minimum amount of time on, and they're getting you 80% of the way. This means that if you stop doing the things that, that you're doing 80% of the time that only get you 20% of the way, and you start spending more of your time doing 80% actions, the things that get you 80% of the way, then the potential is you could possibly do four times more in the same time. Now, obviously, it, it could be more than four times more, it could be less than four times more, it depends on how effective you are now. Um, and obviously, you can't always spend all of your time doing 80% um, action. Sometimes there are things you have to do which only get you a bit of the way, but they're kind of necessary things. Actually, they might actually be 80% action when you think about it. But anyway, the potential is to do significantly more. And believe me, this works. It might seem like a kind of uh, concept which is hard to apply, but when you do start to apply it in your life, it really works. It's amazing the amount I have started to, to do as a result of applying this in my life. Compared to, I'm not saying I'm amazing and I do, <laughs> I do absolutely amazing things, but for me on a personal level, compared to what I was able to do a couple of years ago, the amount that I'm doing now, I'm sure the people on, on the program who have been with me for a long time will tell you I do a lot more now than I did before, and I did quite a, quite a bit before. So. Um, in terms of uh, making music, making great music, what are the 80% um, actions? What is the most effective way to become a brilliant music producer? So 
right now, the example I'm going to use is if you are kind of starting out your journey, uh, uh, beginning your journey. And if you are not a beginner, um, please understand the only reason I'm doing that is because most of the people out there, most of the people watching this will be beginners because there are more beginners than there are anyone else. Because as you go up the up the hierarchy, more and more people give up or, or stop stop doing it. But if you apply these principles, I'm going to use an example for people who are just starting out, but if you apply these principles um, and, uh, yeah, just apply these principles, it will work for you as well. Uh, a, a, anyone from a superstar DJ all the way down to a beginner. So, um, what is the most effective way to uh, become a music producer? Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you uh, what it isn't. Um, you know that thing where uh, that sort of uh, tutorial trap where you have that music in your head and it's very different from your music now. So you go to the internet and you start learning all of this stuff um, about music production. Um, and then you get more and more and more and more confused uh, because there's all this uh, conflicting information and you don't end up producing anything. You start doing things like making kick drums and uh, uh, learning how to make a certain kind of bass sound uh, and not actually finishing music. Well, when people um, go through that kind of, I call it the, the um, when they're trapped in the tutorial trap, quite often I will get a, an email, an email Along the lines of, um, they'll, they'll write to me and they'll say, I just watched a YouTube video with, I don't know, Avicii or, or somebody, somebody really big. And he was showing how he makes a tune. And I realized I know more about music production Than him. I mean, how many times have you watched a YouTube video of, of one of your heroes or, or a legend and you've realized that either you know about the same amount or you probably know a lot more about music production than him? The thing is, in this sentence, there's a word which uh, is the kind of important one, the word that, that shows... Uh, that they're, they're thinking in the wrong way. And the word is about. Unless you want to be a music production tutor, you do not need to know very much about music production. The only thing you need to do is actually produce music. Knowing about music production is not the same thing as actually producing music. If you think about when you learn to walk, or well, you probably don't remember when you learn to walk, but if you think about children when, when, they, when they learn to walk, or when you learn to talk, or when you learn to ride a bike, did your parents sit you down and say, okay, this is how you walk. And you went, hmm, okay. And then you, you, you did that. No, you just did it. And you might say, yeah, but I mean, walking is so much easier than learning how to use Ableton. For a, I can guarantee you, I, I have a, a, a son, uh, 17 months now, and he walked a few, a few months ago. I guarantee you, learning to walk for a child is much, much, much more difficult than you learning to use Ableton. You have the resources to figure it out for yourself. Making music and be becoming good at it is, in fact, much more similar to learning to ride a bike or walking than, say, learning uh, maths. It's, it's a much more, you have to actually do it. Even if someone, you learn it intellectually, you need to actually do it uh, as well. Um, Aristotle said, for the things we have to learn before we can do them, we learn by doing them, which sounds like a bit of a counterintuitive and weird way of doing it. I mean, what I'm talking about here um, is the difference 
between schooling and learning. Because we've all been to school, and a lot of us have been to college, we have been schooled not only in uh, the subjects that we've learned at school, but also we've been schooled in being schooled. We've become used to being schooled. And what I'm telling you, uh, what I have experienced, and including me, by the way, um, what I'm telling you, what I have experienced, is the best kind of learning, certainly in something with uh, music production, isn't from schooling. Learning is a different thing. The best kind of learning is uh, by doing. So let's just go through some of the um, differences between learning about music production and actually producing music. So, first of all, learning about music production is passive learning. Okay? You sit there, you get taught, uh, you take stuff in, and you forget most of it, usually. I do, anyway. Uh, and then producing music is active practice. Learning about music production, you are gaining an intellectual understanding. And obviously, that can be useful. I'm not saying it's not useful. Um, when you're actually producing music, you are, in a sense, committing it to muscle memory. Um, learning about music production is awesome. I mean, it's really what you want to know about if you want to become a music production tutor, right? But if you want to become a music producer, you've got to produce music. I mean, even, even if you learn about music production first, you've still got to do the producing music. So why not just do the production without learning about it? And then, so obviously, going back to the 80-20 thing, this is most definitely a 20% action. I'm not saying that learning about music production doesn't improve your music production. For sure it does, but probably only 20%. 80% action is always, always, always actually producing music. I mean, I uh, realized this relatively early on. I was lucky enough to um, have a friend, a kind of a mentor in Andy, who I'm going to tell you more about in a minute, Andy from Google Armada, who was totally all about taking action and just figuring it out for yourself. So I was lucky enough to learn that fairly early on. And the 80% action is always producing music. Um, because when you produce music, uh, you practice it, you get better at it, um, and if you if you do if you focus on that alone, then and instead of focusing on learning about music production, then I have seen and I believe that you will get there, probably around four times or even better, faster. So, any. An example of, of this 80-20 um, rule, I'm going I'm to kind of tell you a little story about what happened with, with, with me and Andy in order to kind of um, explain this to you, uh, what, what happened and, and some, some things that you need to know about my approach to time. So as some of you know, I need to take some more water. When I left university, went to Oxford and did music in university. When I left university, I was in a band with a guy called um, Andy from Groove Armada. Well, he wasn't in Groove Armada at that time. He, 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 we'd just come up from university. And we were in a band called Beat Foundation. And um, we, um, when we, we did live gigs, this was back in the 90s. Let me just see if I can share the screen with you. Um, So yeah, we were in a band 
in the 90s and so this is Andy group model and we were in a band um, in the 90s and we had loads and loads of equipment synthesizers and sam uh, uh, samplers and uh, synthesizers <laughs> and samplers and keyboards and uh, a saxophone and a bass and loads and loads of stuff so we had to buy various vehicles in order to uh, get around to these gigs. We set up in clubs, it was absolutely ridiculous. So we, oh I've got a, so we um, bought, Andy thought it would be a really good idea if we bought an ambulance, I'm sorry about this but the screen share isn't working very well. Yeah, if we bought an ambulance like this, Here we go. So that it was like that, but it was in in brown. So uh, we bought this ambulance. We got all the stuff, and we had a gig up in. Uh, we had this gig up in the north of England. I lived in London at the time, and the gig up in the north of England. It took about I think four or five hours to get there. Um, on, on main on main roads. Anyway, we were really 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 late, so time was a massive issue for us. And uh, we put all the stuff in the ambulance. Two of the other band members had to get on public transport, and me and Andy got in the ambulance. And we drove through London, and it was a Friday, so the rush hour traffic was absolutely uh, terrible. And we got onto the motorway with I think like two or three hours to go, so we were already incredibly late. As soon as we hit the M1, we hit this enormous uh, amount of traffic. It was just like this huge traffic jam. I was freaking out already because I was like, man, we're going to miss the sound check because we had a sound check in, in the afternoon. We're never, we're never going to make a sound check. And it was like, it's all right, let's just, let's just get on with it. Anyway, as soon as we hit this traffic jam, after a, a few minutes, me and Andy were sitting there and smoke started to uh, come through the, um, the air, air things, whatever they're called, the, the air things, and the cabin started to fill up with smoke. Uh, me, and, me and Andy obviously started to uh, freak out a bit. Anyway, through the smoke, Andy spied a, an AA vehicle uh, a few cars down the motorway because they were yellow. Um, and AA are the roadside assistance vehicles. So Andy suggested, because Andy was driving, so Andy suggested that I get out of the, the car, the, the uh, ambulance, and run down the motorway <laughs> through the traffic to uh, flag down this AA van. I questioned this course of action, and without another word, Andy um, unbelted himself, which because he, uh, he was driving, he got out and he ran down the motorway. And I'll never forget, I'll never forget the sight of Andy through this smoke. I could see Andy uh, running down the motorway. He's a very, very, very tall guy, uh, running down the motorway towards this AA van. Anyway, he came back, and unfortunately, the AA man was on another job, and we had to call up. So. We managed to get the uh, van off the road. We wound down the windows, got the, got the smoke out, and we realised that when the ambulance stopped, it overheated. So we put water in it, uh, and we decided to go on the B roads, the, the non-main roads, the, the, the motorways, because we thought there'd be less traffic. Anyway, we were going through the country. Everything was fine. We were still going to be late uh, for the sound check. In fact, I don't think we were going we were to make the sound check. Anyway, we uh, got to another truck. We got to about 50 miles away from the gig and we were in the middle of the countryside and uh, there were kind of fields around and everything and we got into another traffic jam and this time the ambulance filled with smoke and it made an absolutely awful sound and it stopped. We managed to get it to the side of the road but this time there was no going forward at all. We, we weren't going anywhere in this uh, ambulance. So me and Andy uh, got out of the van and I was like, well, that's it, we might as well give up. Because we didn't have mobile phones back then, this was like in the, in the mid-90s, we didn't have mobile phones, so um, I, I was like, well, we might as well just, just give up, you know, there weren't, weren't even any uh, public telephones either, so, but without another word of warning, Andy r ran off into the wild blue yonder, <laughs> through, through a field, saying, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to find someone who can help us, and I was just like, well, I don't know, he's crazy, what, what, what's he doing? Anyway, about um, 15 minutes later, he comes back and um, 
in a, I will show you this, in a van very similar to this, driven by a, an extremely scary looking guy. And what he'd done, Andy had found, um, Andy had found a uh, scrapyard with some, some blokes in, in, this, uh, in the office, in the kind of prefab office, and he'd, offer, he'd said, could anyone get us to Derby, I think it was, is the name of the town. Can anyone get us to Derby? I'll pay you £150. Um, and this guy said, yeah, all right. Uh, so he turned up in this uh, van. Um, obviously, it's a lot smaller, so we couldn't get all of our equipment in, but we banged all of the equipment into, into this van. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't take some of it, so that was the last time we saw the, one of the band members' trombone which is uh, uh, something that I'm very ashamed of. But anyway, we left the, st the stuff that we couldn't fit in the ambulance. I, unfortunately, could not fit in this van uh, unless I lay over all of the equipment with my ear pressed to a massive subwoofer in the back, which the guy had installed. And we drove off, and as we drove off, he pressed play on some happy hardcore music, which was really wonderful. So I... I think I still have tinnitus in my left ear as a result of that. So, to cut a very long story somewhat short, basically we got to the gig, we managed to uh, actually set up around the DJ before, the, the, the night had already started because we were so late, we totally missed the sound check, but we managed to play the gig, and in the end we um, totally rocked it. It was a massive success. So. Why am I telling you about this uh, exactly? Well, there are five things in this story that uh, directly apply to time. Um, so the first of them is in that there was an 80% action. An action or a thing that we were looking to do which would provide 80% of the results. The 80% action was, of course, doing the gig. Andy was 100% focused on the 80% action, whereas I was focused on the 20% action, which was the uh, sound check. The sound check was, in effect, a nice to do. It was a. It would be great if we could do that, but it wasn't the thing that was going to bring most of the results. The 80% action was the gig. So Andy, 100% focused on the 80% action. The second thing, and I used the word there, was Andy was completely focused on the goal. He had focus. I kept on getting distracted by all the problems and all the stuff that was going on around me. I mean, I was distracted by the sound check for a start. I was distracted by the 20% action. Um, and not focused on the bit that was going to get the results. He had the ability, even when all of this stuff was going on around him, to focus on what was important. The next thing was that despite the fact of being focused on the gig and it being quite difficult for us to get there, he was always looking at the next step. He knew what the 80% action was, he knew what the goal was, but he didn't get overwhelmed by it. That's one of the problems with goals um, a lot of the time, these big goals, is that we get overwhelmed by them. We compare ourselves, we see how far we have to go, and so we go, oh, ooh, I can't do it. That's what happened to me, didn't it? I, was, I kept on going, we're never going to get there. Oh. Whereas Andy was always like, what is the next thing that I have to do in order to get there? step by step by step. This is why daily practice is so important because you start to see that you always focus on the next step. Then you find out what the next one is, I can't remember. Andy made fast decisions, very fast decisions. And bear in mind, these decisions were uh, made based on extremely uh, limited information. Uh, he, he had the ability to make decisions based on a, an enormous amount of uncertainty as to the result. If you think about it, 
some of them paid off and some of them didn't pay off. For instance, when he uh, got out of the ambulance and ran, ran, ran down the motorway, which might not have been the best decisions, uh, but he took it anyway, um, it didn't pay off. But that didn't really matter because the next decision he took, fast decision he took, to run off into the wild blue yonder did pay off. Um, and, I mean, in terms of music production, um, Brian Eno, uh, the great uh, music producer, famous music producer, kind of says it best. I'm going to show you this. Um, so he says, Often in life you are com confronted by many possibilities. The best thing you can do is go for one with a quick decision, then make that choice work for you. It takes you to interesting places with surprising results. How true that is. Uh, and the same, you know, it's always true in the studio. Make fast decisions because the most, the best decision you can make is a good decision. The next best decision you can make is a bad decision. But the worst decision you can make at all is no decision because making no decision is, in fact, a decision. It's a decision to allow other stuff to um, make the decision for you. Um, and then, of course, the other thing that Andy displayed, um, which is uh, really important here is that he that's a D don't give up he didn't give up even when uh, everybody around him i.e. me was telling him there was absolutely no point in doing it it was never going to work all that kind of stuff he knew he was going to get to that gig he he um, had this unshakable, uh, and this is the second thing, belief that he could do it. When you um, have belief and you don't give up, then uh, you are able to always focus on those 80% um, actions. And one of the things I've noticed about the big successful music producers that I've uh, met, and I, I, the, re the reason I talk about being successful in terms of sort of being famous is because you might have heard of them. <laughs> so uh, there are many, many different definitions of success, obviously. But um, in terms of the ones you might have heard of, I remember um, spending uh, an afternoon with Steve Angelo in uh, a, in my in my studio. He came because he would he was just starting Size Records. And he, was, he wasn't like massive, absolutely massive. Well, he was quite big even then, but he wasn't as absolutely massive as he is now. This was before the Swedish house mafia. So he came to my studio because he was looking for tracks to sign to his label, size, size records, and we played each other music. And it very quickly became apparent that our musical styles were very different. It wasn't the work, but we just talked about stuff for, for, for an afternoon. And apart from an enormous amount of uh, energy and enthusiasm, um, one of the things I noticed about him, and this is true of Andy uh, from River Mine as well, and pretty much everyone who's got anywhere, is that they have this uh, unshakable belief that they are going to um, do it. Um, that the, 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 it's it's going to happen. I mean, I listened to a, a resident advisor interview podcast with Yusuf um, from Circus, who's um, a DJ. He used to be the uh, resident at Cream in Liverpool. In fact, I think he, yeah, no, he used to be the resident at Cream in Liverpool. And he um, he said that when he was going, he was just going to Cream as a punter, he used to, um, when they put in new decks, because it was vinyl back then, when they put in new decks, which were essentially on elastic bands to stop the vibrations from affecting the record, and they were quite hard to use because they used to swing around. I, I used to play on them quite a bit too, and they were quite hard to use. He used to lie awake at night. This was like before he, when he was just going as a, as, as a punter, when I say punter, that's a, uh, an audience member. It's not a bad, it's not a bad phrase, by the way. It's an English or an uh, uh, Aussie way of saying somebody who goes, an audience member. So yeah, so when he went as a punter, he, he would um, lie awake at night worrying about how he was going to play on those decks. Now that is belief. <laughs> Worrying about how you're going to play in a club before you've even been asked to play or before anyone knows about you, that's belief. And do you know what? What happened? He became a resident. He became the resident after a few years. Um, oh yeah, and then the final thing I learned about time was whatever you do, don't buy an ambulance if you want to get to gigs on time. 
So you might think that all of these things, like making decisions and persistence and belief um, and uh, focusing, uh, being able to focus and uh, knowing what the 80% action is are things you are, are born with. Um, they're kind of things that are um, innate that you can't change. And the thing is, uh, that's so not true, it's, it's ridiculous. Because your brain is, is plastic, because your brain can uh, changes according to how you think, um, these things are not innate. Uh, they can be developed. They are skills just like uh, music production as well. And this is the kind of stuff I teach in my um, How to Focus course. And you've already seen what can happen. And um, I'm now going to tell you about the, uh, not, not How to Focus course, the Start Now Finish Fast course, but I'm now going to tell you about the uh, Start Now Finish Fast course. So, Start Now Finish Fast is a six month online um, program where you get monthly videos uh, and MP3 versions, so you can listen to them wherever you want, to, and you can either stream them or download them. Uh, and also, you get a PDF playbook every month with exercises in it. And this is where the real value is. You know I said that your brain is plastic? Well, by using your brain, you actually develop these skills. So this PDF playbook has these exercises that I want you to do each month. But a lot of the exercises are about doing stuff while you're actually producing music. So if you're worried about time, and, and the other thing is they also help you um, with time. They help you do a lot more in a lot less time, as, as we've already um, explained. Um, and um, so what, what happens is you sign up, and then you'll get the, as I mentioned before, the How to Focus course. Now, uh, one of the Start Now Finish Fast uh, members, Mike, he said, and he finished six tracks in six months, and he said that the How to Focus course was uh, the, uh, when I asked him in an interview, which is on my YouTube page, by the way, when I asked him, what would you suggest people do in order to get, uh, you know, do, do the same as what you've done, because 16 tracks in six months with a day job is pretty amazing, he said, go do the How to Focus course immediately before you go to sleep, so that's what you get first. Um, and again, it's just, it's just a few videos in a playbook. It doesn't take an enormous amount of time. Um, and if I was selling that on its own, it would be um, $300. Then month one is about habits. This is about taking daily action, which we're doing with the production game as well. Um, but there is actually a, uh, a way that habits work. They have a certain structure that if you know how it works, um, you can actually do them. And um, I, I take you through that process. Then month through two is about making those decisions fast, um, which is absolutely essential to, to becoming successful in anything. If you think about it, every time you don't make a decision, you're going to have to make it again down the line. So that's an enormously uh, terrible thing for your time. It, it means you're spending a lot more time. Then in month three, you talk about building momentum. This is about how you view the world. Um, probably a lot to do with belief as well, if you're having trouble with belief, building your momentum. Then in month four, we are talking about the obstacles that stop you from uh, keeping up this momentum. Things like fear, month five, boredom. I mean, the music production process is, it has moments uh, which are incredibly, incredibly boring. Because, and you have to repeat them over and over again. In order, as I said, in order to become great, you've got to do it. You've got to do it repeatedly. So overcoming boredom is incredibly important. And then in month six is where the rubber really hits the road and you get it out the door. Um, when you get to the end of a track, I mean, how many tracks have you nearly finished and they're not, not finished? See, the thing is, because you've been listening to the track over and over again, uh, you're probably bored of it. So often, this is one of the worst times. So actually finishing it is one of the most uh, important things you can do, because you might be really good. You might just be bored of it. And then they're sending it to other people, which is what we talk about in um, Get It Out The Door. And also, so if I was selling all of that separately, 
will be six hundred dollars. Now, as you know, and as you can tell, I am committed to your success. Whether you choose to join me on this start now finish fast journey or not, I am always I'm always uh, trying to interact with all the people, and it's no different with uh, the start now finish fast program. Yesterday, I did a Q and A, uh, which sh showed you what happens. When you join the program, you get six monthly Q&As like that, where I answer any of your questions about music production, because this isn't, as you might have guessed, isn't a music production course, but it does help you to produce music, uh, if you take action, of course. So I do six monthly Q&As um, online. I, I gave you an example of one yesterday, just as a kind of hint of, of, of how it goes, and you can ask me any questions about technical stuff, uh, and stuff like that, but plus, um, you get a forum, a forum community. I've already showed it to you when I showed you that um, what Mark said about his amazing success getting that remix on 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 Decca. So um, this is called Make Music Your Life. I am going to start charging for it um, very very soon. We're just um, clearing up a few little technical issues. I don't want to start charging for it until it's become, uh, until we've got it absolutely right. But when I do, that's what it's going to be. You get, um, at the moment, you'll, you will get lifetimes access to that. So if you used it for two years, which many people have already done, I think Mark, who posted on the forum just a few days ago, he joined in July 2012. He was the first person ever to join, so he's nearly up to two years. So if you did, if you did that, it would be how much would that be? Yeah, around that. Um, and and um, then on top of that, just for this is the uh, special offer that I'm going to do today. Um, on top of that, if you join by the end of this week, I'm going to offer you a free one-to-one -one coaching session with me. One times one-to-one -one coaching session with me. Um, that would be 60 minutes. Now, um, let me just show you what one of my um, clients said if I can find it, about my one-to-one -one coaching. Where is it? Here. Okay. So this is uh, Claude von Stroke, who um, I am actually currently coaching. I just had a coaching with session with him last week. And he said, Mike Monday's process has helped me enormously. I have two record labels, a heavy touring schedule, a wife and two children, and a music production career all running in tandem. Remember what I said about how time time doesn't increase when you get more successful <laughs> um, and w when you don't have a, a day job? Um, there are times when it seems unmanageable. I get lost in a downward spiral that limits my effectiveness as a leader and my ability to be creative in the studio. Whenever I have a session with Mike, we talk it all out and a sense of calm comes over me. I get back to basics and work out all the things in my head that need to get worked out. His process is both calming and therapeutic. I would also like to add that the additional fact that Mike is a music producer himself and a veteran DJ lends itself to an extra level of trust. I don't think I would take advice or listening to someone in the same way who was from outside the music industry. In a nutshell, I find Mike Monday's process to be an extremely valuable way to organize and free my chaotic brain to do what it is supposed to be doing. So that's just an example of uh, what one of my uh, one to one clients say. I don't take on many. And while I have um, offered coaching sessions to the people who um, have gone through the, the, the free training, I am going to be offering less because I'm doing so much now with uh, the free content. I'm doing so much with uh, the broader community that my time is very limited. So what's going to happen is uh, this offer is only going to be open until the end of the week or until 10 people um, go for it, because obviously my time is uh, limited. So how much is all of this stuff? Oh, but yeah, by the way, the one-to-one the -one coaching, at the moment, I mean, I don't usually 
offer, if I was going to offer you one-to-one -one coaching, I don't usually offer um, single coaching sessions. Um, what I do offer is three, six, or ten. And um, usually for a one-to-one -one coaching session, because of the value you get out of the coaching process and because of the experience I've had of doing it, that's how much I charge for, uh, how much I get for a one-to-one uh, -one coaching session. So, how much is all this going to be? Well, I'm not going to ask the 12,000 and upwards uh, uh, fee that the a lot of those music production courses um, ask for, because you don't need to know all of that stuff in order to make music. I'm sure they are good value for money because they pack all everything you possibly need to know about music production into them. But you don't need to know all that stuff in order to make great music. Um, just look at some of those YouTube videos of your heroes, and, and you'll realise that. Um, and I'm not going to charge the for six months coaching. Um, I know that's that's. I'm not going to charge what I charge for ten. 10 sessions of coaching. Um, instead, you can get all of this, including the one-to-one -one session for me for the next, um, for the, until the end of the week, or if you're in the first 10, you can get it for $497. What I'm going to do is I'm going to display the offer now, where you can get to it. So if you go to uh, Poppins and click the Get Started link, so you can get it for uh, $497 or one payment of $97 and then another five. So every month, um, easy payment. So if you want to uh, join me, get a free one-to-one -one coaching session with me to really uh, get you moving. By the way, you can take the one-to-one -one session at any point um, in the six months of the program. That's, that's how it works. And you can either do it at the start, but many people, uh, people who uh, many people choose to do it uh, later on in the program once they've had a chance to sort of get through. So if you want to um, get all of this um, for that very very low price, for, and just for the next few days, then click the Get Started link now. So now, if you have any questions about the offer or the webinar, I am going to be happy to answer them um, in the chat. Oh, we've got a load of people. <laughs> oh, you're such good people. Uh, we've got a load of start now, finish fast people all saying amazing things about the program. Um, for all of those who are not on SNFF, Jonathan Flat, uh, I can't recommend it highly enough. Nikolai, second that, totally worth it, as long as you act on it. See, that's the point. All of the results that I've talked about, like Mike, uh, the guy who wrote 16 tracks in six months, Mark, who's got his remix signed to Deco, and I've said it once already, but it's really, really important. None of it happens. Uh, it doesn't just work. You actually have to do it, and you have to continue to do it. You have to act on it daily. That's why um, I do the um, Q and A's. Um, that's why um, I, we have the forum community, so that you get the support you need in order to create this change. The reason it's over six months is so that it doesn't overwhelm you, and you. Um, can take those take those steps over time to actually change the way that you work and focus on those 80% um, actions. Um, what else have we got? Cynthia says uh, SNFF rocks. Brilliant. Um, Blair, SNFF has changed my life. Is changing my life. Um, Excellent. Ian says you can still make fast decisions when you experiment. The best of both worlds? Question mark. Um, excellent. So click the link now in order to um, get in on the um, special offer with the one-to-one. -one um, coaching session. I'm gonna I'm gonna close this down now. There'll be if you're watching this as a replay, there'll be a link on this page. Or if there isn't, just send me an email to um, mm at mikemonday.com, and I will uh, get back to you with details of, of how you can sign up. I know sometimes these things don't work, and there are links where there there should be. Um, 
But yeah, so click the link now if you want to get in on this uh, amazing deal. It's open for the until the end of the week um, for the first 10 people to sign up. I'm going to uh, close the recorded part of this webinar now, but I will stay on the chat for a bit longer for anybody that wants to um, stay on and chat. Um, remember to click the link now to get in on this deal. And I will see you again tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, I can't remember what we're going to be talking about, but I'm sure it's going to be really great. So I'll see you again tomorrow. Onwards and upwards. Keep making that music.